I've got Courtney Reimer joining me today. Uh, Courtney, what is your official title with She Wears Worth? You know, I've never been asked that before. I, the founder, I guess. Um, I Hello. founded She Wears Worth September of 2019. So um, I oftentimes will say we as like I have a huge team. It's really uh, myself and the Lord. So founder <laughs> would be the main <laughs> title, I guess. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So um, you can start. Tell me how this all came to be. That is a wonderful question and honestly a story that I I love telling because you can't talk about it without talking about the goodness of God. So um, I was, I guess, I was born and raised Catholic. So I spent 27 years really doing all of the things that, you know, you're quote unquote supposed to do, right? I was went to church every Sunday, was an altar server, um, taught Sunday school, all of these things. And I found myself at age 27, you know, um, living the dream by society standards. I had a great job. I lived in an awesome apartment. Um, I was living in Austin, Texas at the time. All of these things, right, that based on the world, I had it made. Like 27, I was crushing it. Yet, as we hear so often in these stories, like something was missing. And I didn't know what that was. And from a kind of crazy turn of events that I know the Lord started, I ended up going on a mission trip um, with Bob Goff. He does, he writes the book Love Does. I know. He wasn't on the trip. I guess I should say that. Bob Goff's organization, Love Does, um, to Uganda. And I remember telling my parents and they were like, you're going where? You know, just so crazy. And I just... I just knew like I needed a radical change, like something in my life was not adding up because, right, I kind of lived by that mindset of I could do whatever I wanted Monday through Saturday night. But if I was in the pew on Sunday morning, I was good, right? I would get some, you know, Jesus dust sprinkled on me. My slate would be wiped clean. And that just wasn't that wasn't cutting it. And it was, so I I go on this trip, um, really not knowing what to expect. Um, I love telling people that it was the second day of the trip and I'm, I wake up and everyone's like reading and I'm like, Ooh, what are you guys reading? Um, they are reading their Bibles. Um, I might be the only person in the world who went on the other side of the country to a mission trip and didn't bring a Bible because it wasn't on the packing list. Like, you know, I had like seven pairs of shoes, but the Bible, right? And just, it's so those simple things like that, that I, when I look back, I think of just how like childlike I was. Like I, I didn't even know what I was missing. I didn't know what I was looking for. And I often feel like it's in, when you're in that posture of just like utter, like, I don't even know that that's when God is like, okay, your guard is down and now I'm going to do my best work. And Um, it was a few days into the trip and I'm sitting there, um, one evening and I started just kind of telling my, um, kind of my life story to this guy who was on this trip. And, um, you know, I had done, I had lived with a boyfriend, which I knew wasn't right. And I, and that pained me and I just, all these secret sins, right. That I was sharing. And he looked at me so just beautifully. Like, I feel like if, if the face of Jesus were just, he just asked, what is your relationship like with God? And I was like, uh, well, what do you mean? Like, I I had never been asked that simple question. It was never about a relationship. It was always about the religion and the checking the boxes. And so um, I felt like that night I was humbled hugely. And we went into this conversation of what does that mean to have a relationship with God? What does it mean to talk to God? What does it mean to listen to God? So I went and I, you know, kind of, wrote a note to God that night. And I was like, I don't know what these people have. Cause at this point, right. I thought I was good to go. I had been baptized, raised in the church. So I'm like, I don't know what they have, but it's not what I have. And I want that. Like they have this unshakable joy, this confidence that just comes from such a beautiful place. I want that. Um, the next day was Easter Sunday of 2017. And I woke up and I was a different person. Um, and I love it. I, it was, th- yeah, I was a different person that day. And I feel we often hear like these testimony stories and then it ends there. It ends like I woke up, I was new, God changed me. Um, and everything was rainbows and butterflies. Um, that was not my story. I had made this radical change. I come back from this trip and I'm still in the same apartment with my same friends, my same job. And now I'm like, well, wait, how do I do this? How do I reconcile the sins of my past 27 years with now this person that God has called me to be? And it was hard. It was, 
you know, I, I, I literally got home. I Amazon primed my Bible, you know, because like, and Googled how to read the Bible, just so simple. And it was, it was in these moments that I've, I was seeing just two very conflicting things. I was reading my Bible and I was learning of these characters who were flawed and who were messed up yet God still used over and over and over again. And, you know, learning of the foundational things of like, no, but God chose you regardless of what you did. God loves you no matter what happens. Right. So I was seeing all of this and I was loving it and I'm like, okay, yes. And then I, you, you kind of shift and you're, then you're in the world. And I was hearing all of the same kind of messages, especially right. We live in this era where it's very much women empowerment, right? As a woman, you are strong and beautiful and bold and capable, all of these things, but there's, but the, but there was no foundation. And so that's kind of where she was worth came from is that I was, I, I knew that I was learning. I was all of these things that I was beautiful and I was loved and I was worthy, but for the first time in my life, it had nothing to do with all of these worldly things, which is what we're bombarded with, right? Like you go on your social media and one simple scroll and you hear you are enough. Like I, I wasn't enough. Like it was very obvious that I was not enough. And so that I felt that challenge of God be like, you need to tell people, like you need to talk about where worth comes from, where value comes from. And I wish I could say like, I took up that cross and I ran with it. And I was like, "Mm, no, please choose someone else. Like I am not the right girl for the job. I, this is so new to me. Like, I don't, I don't know anything. And Again, that's, I feel like the Lord loves to use the people who have no clue what they're doing because the glory goes all to him. So that that's kind of how She Wears Worth came about. It wasn't until literally like two years later that I finally took the plunge and like made a website and started it. I'm still clueless as to what I was actually being called to do, but that is the the long answer to that question. But yeah. I love it. So now you have this conference. It's coming up. Uh, Give us some details and who's invited. Yeah, definitely. No, so um, She Wears Worth, we do a lot of different things. Um, Obviously, we launched right before the pandemic. So I am a people person. Every All these in-person events I wanted to do. um, And then it was like, just kidding. You can't do that for the next two years. So... um, it was a it was again a challenging time but such a sweet time because I feel like that's when God and I really had some heart to hearts of like I feel like you called me to do this so why would we literally put a stop on all things and um honestly for me I was still I'm still very much working through my personal worth and identity and everything and it was um the idea of this conference was put on my heart last um, beginning of last year with just in the middle of the pandemic, working with um, high school youth girls and just hearing how all of them, they all felt so alone, so isolated. And I wanted, I'm like, I wish we could get all on a plane and just fly somewhere and just all be together. And my, again, my sweet husband, who I guess I should say that guy who asked the question of what my relationship like was with God, I married him. So like, it was a twofer, like, Met my husband, met the Lord. Yeah. Anyways. So he was like, why don't you do a conference? Like, what? Like, you know, pray about it. Start talking about it. And again, I was like, mm, it would be much more convenient if someone else could just do it. So um, here we are. The conference is scheduled for October 28th and 29th. It's a Friday and a Saturday. It's going to be held in Winnipeg um, at the Riverwood Church Community, their warehouse location. The space will fit 400 girls. So that is our hope to get 400 girls grade nine through age 19. So we really desire to focus in on that high school girl, as well as that girl who's graduated and she's trying to figure out who she is, where does she belong in the world? And the 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 main focus of our conference um, and the theme for our this year is set apart. Um, that at the end of the day, like a life with Christ, you are not meant to be like everyone else. And that is something to rejoice. I think it's something that I, I know I struggled with. I sometimes struggle with, with, I think as women, we, we look at the filters, we look at what we see and we want to be like this, even, even in our best intentions, we see, we have women that we look up to, oh, if only I could be like this or act like this or have this skill when like, 
oh, girlfriend, no. God made you on purpose for a purpose and you're different. And that is something that we should celebrate. So we have some incredible speakers lined up um, and that we're going to tackle some pretty tough topics. Um, mental health and anxiety will be a, a huge one. I think it's so needed, especially um, something that the big C church, I think, needs to really talk about and talk about well. Um, and then we'll talk about relationships, both dating and friendship, and um, then body image, right? How do you, as a teenager, love who God made, but also like you want to wear makeup and you want to look cute. Like, how do you, how do you do that? Well, um, so yeah, October 28th and 29th in Winnipeg. People can, or I should say teen girls can pre-register. Um, how can they do that? Yeah, you bet. So I would say first thing, please check out our website. It's just shewearsworth.com. And then right on that main front page, there's a link to go to our conference information. Our tickets are on sale. Actually, we have early bird tickets on sale until the end of this month. So August 31st, um, they're $15 off. So um, definitely pre-register and get those early bird tickets if you can. And you can sign up as an individual, you can sign up as a group, you can come with your mom. Um, there's really no right or wrong way to do it. We just, we want you there. Um, I feel like if, if you are a mom or a youth leader listening to this, bring your girls to this. There has not been anything in Winnipeg or in Manitoba that is created for your high school girl. Like this is done with them in mind. Um, I have to say a huge shout out to the girls in our youth group. Um, I attend, it's Cornerstone Ministries here in our small little town of Crystal City. And our high school girls from the last, over this last year have been so incredible with just being open and honest of like, what is it that they actually need to see? What is it as a high school girl? What is it like walking in the hallway of a school? Like what is, what are the challenges that they're actually facing? So um, I think that is really important that everything we're talking about came from a high school girl. And like, this is what we need. Not to, even though I think I'm I'm still cool and young, like I, I have no idea what it's like to be 15 in high school. And I honestly, you couldn't pay me money to go back. So <laughs> I love that. Okay. Well, we will let everybody know about it, uh, how to get tickets and who is all invited Thank you so much, Courtney, for yes. joining me today. It's been a pleasure. I appreciate it. Thank you again. And yeah, if you're listening, I hope to see you there, your daughter's there, your nieces there. Um, any questions, all the information can be found at shewearsworth.com or on our Instagram, just at shewearsworth.